an adventure to Asmodea. Hey everybody, uh, this is Lord Gareth and welcome to Asmodea City. Uh, I really appreciate you being here and uh, of course we would always appreciate it if you would do us a huge favor and help us grow this channel. Uh, trust me, there's going to be a ton of information here and uh, not only just about D&D but the Foundry uh, Virtual Tabletop, we're going to talk about Roll D&D, &D, uh, sorry, Roll 20, D&D Beyond, uh, all these different resources, token artwork, uh, modules, uh, I mean, I adventures, anything you can think of we're going to be talking about here. And we want your input on that too. So please hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, and hit the bell so that you can be notified of all those new videos. So with that, let's, uh, without any, and I'm, you know, I hate it when people say this, and I'm going to say it only because I hate it. And I, I, if I ever say it again, catch me and you'll get some sort of prize. It, this, without further ado, I hate that phrase. Uh, being in voice work, it's probably one of the most irritating things that you hear. But anyway, I digress. Today we're talking about modules, uh, specifically for the Foundry VTT. Uh, for those of you that don't know what that is, this is probably not the video for you because this is about virtual tabletop, specifically Foundry Virtual Tabletop, which is what you see I'm in right now. Uh, and uh, if you don't know what that is, uh, this video is not going to help you at all. So just save you some time. Now, on also, I just want to warn you, this video is going to be a bit long because it is about a module. I am going to be talking about settings uh, that you are definitely going to want to know about because if you set things wrong, trust me, you're going to you're going to regret it. Uh, so feel free to fast forward through me talking and you know, jump to jump around to different spots. That's the beauty of these videos. Uh, it allows you to decide where you want to stop and where you want to start. So that being said, sorry, I had to reach over and turn a switch. Um, that being said, let's get started with this. I want to, uh, I want to make sure, sorry, this little switch isn't working. There it goes. Okay. I want to make sure that, uh, I cover everything kind of thoroughly. And what this one is about is, uh, loot. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Uh, what this is, is about loot and uh, specifically items of loot that you might want to create. So one of the challenges that we always have, uh, you know, in VTT, if you don't have a module that handles this, is what do we do if we want to create, like, let's say this old chest here and we want to put things in it. And let's say we want to make it cool, right? Well, this module that I'm going to tell you about is called item piles. And the, the, and let me just jump into my module settings here and you can see I got a ton of them and I, I do a lot of testing of these things. So that's why I have it. You don't need probably seven eighths of what I have here, but you'll see this one that's called item piles. And as of this recording, it's 1.4.8. So anything I tell you today, uh, in this recording is valid up to that particular version. So, uh, something new must may have come out and please let us know if it has I'd be happy to do a follow-up especially if it's a really cool update so uh, you can install this just like any other module directly inside of foundry um, you can go into your your module setup and, and go to install module and then search for item piles and then you'll see it you just install it so it's it's very cool now one of the first things that it does and I'm just gonna warn you of this because this is important one of the first things that it does is it creates this new actor called default item pile do not delete this actor. This actor is critical for how this module works. And if you delete it, this module will not work and you'll have to probably uninstall it and reinstall it. Uh, oh, and also uh, a quick little uh, warning, uh, as with any module, before you install it, or frankly, before you uninstall it, uh, either way, back up your VTT system, back up your Foundry setup, just so that you know if something bad happens, you can at least go back to where you were, right? Okay, so um, here we are, uh, and uh, we want to, let's say we want to create, and I'm going to just, just, I'm going to get rid of this one. All right, so we're here, here we are with Captain G, one of my um, favorite players, and my buddy Gendon, and he's not logged in, only Captain G is, and, uh, and I'm in, of course, as a game master, but uh, that's going to be important in a minute, uh, because there's only one active player here. This is essentially an NPC because there's a token here, but he's not logged into the game. So that that's important to know. All right. So let's say we want to create, uh, let's say we want to make a, um, 
uh, let's see, we'll put this hat of wizardry on the ground, and you'll notice it pops up immediately with this dialog that says you want to create a new pile. Now just get used to the word pile. Any, even if it's a single item, it's still a pile, all right? So I'm going to create the pile, and now we have this hat of wizardry sitting on the ground. And if I go back over to my player's view, he now sees, here's, the, here's exactly what, uh, what Captain G is saying, he now sees this hat of wizardry sitting here. Well, that's kind of not helpful. <laughs> it's not it's not very adventure-like. It seems to me that uh, they need to discover these things, not just kind of accidentally see them sitting on the ground with a label floating underneath them. So that's, that's one thing. The other thing is, I'm going to put a couple more items in here. I'm going to put this pole of collapsing, and you'll see it says add to pile. And I'm, uh, let's put this wand in, and I'm going to add that to the pile. Now, you'll see what happens is, is that it now creates this default actor icon as kind of a pouch indicating, hey, this has got more than one thing in it, right? And clearly we don't want that. And going again, going back to my player's view, this, this is silly. This is not what we want. So how do we fix that? How do we correct it? So let's, let's talk about the settings a bit. So first, when you create a pile, uh, I'm sorry, when you install the uh, item piles module, it adds this little... And what I did there, by the way, is I right-clicked, in case you don't know, I just right-clicked on this token, and it adds this new little icon that says Configure Pile. Now, the other way you can do that is just double-click it and go to Configure Pile. So, now you can see that inside this uh, this container, we haven't really decided what it is yet, uh, it's got these three items in it. And as of right now, our players could click on this and see the, the sheet, the information sheet. That will be, again, important in a minute. Um, so they could see this if it was a cursed item, for example, which honestly I think is silly. So, um, so now we can, and by the way, we could add, I, I'm, and I'm going to do this on purpose. I'm going to put a hundred platinum in here and I'm going to uh, update the pile. All right. So now I'm going to configure the pile and in these, now, this is going to take a little while. So if you want to pause and go grab a beer and then come back and, and unpause it and listen to this, that's fine. If you want to skip through it. That's good, but I'm telling you there are things in here. If you don't set them correctly, you're going to be so frustrated that it's going to drive you nuts. So try to bear with me, okay? I'll try to go through quick, but I tend to try to be thorough so I don't miss anything. So uh, first of all, if you disable this uh, item as being a pile, it will turn it into that default actor, this, this default actor item pile here. That's what it's going to turn it into. So the way it does this is it, is it uses an actor to be a container, which makes total sense. I, I get how they do that. So, uh, so uh, if you disable it, you will not be able to re-enable it because it is turned it off as a uh, a new uh, item pile. So you might as well just leave this checked. There's no reason not to. So the interaction distance is kind of interesting. This is something that you might want to consider. So, and, and I'm going to say this very carefully. This is the number of grid units in which players must be to interact with this pile, with this container, with whatever you want to call it. I'll say that again. This is the number of grid units, these little grids, that let's assume this was our, our item pile, the number of grid units they must be within in order to interact with this item. But this is not the item, but I'm just using that as, as an example. So if you leave this to one, they must be here. They couldn't be here. If you made this two, they could be here or here. If you make it three, so on and so on and so on. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, what if you've got uh, a box and you've got this smart player that's uh, you know a warlock and he has the ability to kind of use either mage hand or whatever whatever spell he's got to be able to reach out and and interact with an item from a distance so he doesn't get damaged if it blows up or has poison spray or acid spray or something or whatever whatever inside of it. Um, so if that's the case, he will not be able to do that unless your interaction distance is set long enough out for him to be able to do that. So you might want to consider the size of the room, uh, you know, that sort of thing, because he's not going to be able to interact with it if he's standing in a hallway and he can't see it. Um, so you, you just might want to consider those things as you're creating different uh, piles like this. All right, item inspect. Now, remember I said this was important that they could click on it and see the uh, items sheet in the description. Uh, it is important, sorry, change that again. It is important because if you, for example, put a cursed item 
in your container and you don't want them to be able to know it's a cursed item without picking it up and now they're cursed or or what whatever kind of effect this item has on them when they pick it up uh then you don't want them to be able to inspect the sheet that tells them that so you want them to have to put it in their inventory first and then they can inspect it that makes more sense so so with this little box checked that means they can they can inspect the item itself not this is not this is not the the container this is not the pile this is an item inside the pile or if it's a single item then it would be the item itself all right moving on uh delete when empty this listen up this is important because this is where i got burned and i didn't know better so it wasn't my fault but lesson learned and that's why i'm teaching you so here's the deal when you create uh, a a an item pile you can it, the default module setting by the way is to delete it when it's empty what does that mean that means the players have picked up everything out of the 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 container and so now the container goes whoop, and it disappears the other option is to say no don't delete it when it's empty um it, which is probably the smartest case why because when it gets deleted it gets deleted it's gone and i i haven't found and if i'm wrong and somebody can correct me or maybe the the you know uh creator of this this module uh, watches this video and if I'm wrong tell me correct me because I don't want to give out bad information but I have not found a way to gain back that pile once it's been completely deleted off the the grid uh, which really frustrated me because I created a whole bunch of them they went around and found them all I had it set to delete so they deleted it deleted them and then thinking oh I just it, it'll it'll hide them and then I'll be able to unhide them like mm, eh, nope that's not the case it literally deleted them so don't get frustrated and make that mistake all right so i'm going to say no don't delete this so on this interact macro is pretty much what it says if you've got a macro in your in your list here in your directory of macros and you want to trigger trigger one of these or you create one that you want to trigger you can then enter that macro information here and uh, it will trigger that macro say you want to blow out all the torches in the room or you want to to you know make everybody go blind for 30 seconds or you know whatever it is i mean whatever you want to have happen you can you can make that maybe you want to just play a <laughs> sound when they open it up which would scare the crap out of me but anyway that's the way it is that's where you would put this uh override currencies this is a little interesting because what if you don't play dnd so by default it comes set up for dnd and we have platinum we have gold we have electrum we have silver and we have copper and we have the icons for each of those um, but what if you have some other currency that you want to add to your your gaming system or maybe your gaming system that you're using this module on isn't for D&D maybe it's for something else so uh, I believe I you know and again I don't want to speak incorrectly here but I believe that right now you can only install this in a D&D uh, system a D&D game system I, I again I could be wrong I, I actually I, I will mention it in my uh, comments uh, in in the description uh, below this video if I am and uh, but I believe that's the case so you could for example install this and then change your currency around do whatever you want of course it's gonna be a little tricky on your character sheets to to automatically fill those but whatever uh, that that's fine but this is where you would change that if in fact you wanted to do that I'm not gonna do that uh, this one, I'm, you know what, I'm not even going to go through this one. I think I know what this means, and I've tried reading up on it a little bit, and I was a little confused about it, so I don't want to give you bad information. But right now, I don't use these override item filters. I think I know what they do, uh, but I don't want to give you bad information and tell you the wrong thing. So leave it alone for right now. You don't really need it. So let's move on to the other settings. Might want to pause again and go grab yourself a beer and another beer and come back, and, and we can talk more when you unpause it. So... Uh, in these other settings, this is where kind of the rubber meets the road in terms of how your players are going to interact and what this container, what this, what this, this pile is. Uh, so first of all, we go to these single item settings. This is assuming you're just going to drop a single item on the ground. Um, and it, it, frankly, I've turned this, you know, use item name off and it didn't, it didn't change anything. So I don't know if it even works. Uh, but this uh, says use the pile uh, token image as the image of the item itself so i dropped you know first a hat and then you know whatever so it would leave it as a hat uh this is override single item token scale meaning you could scale the token if you want to um 
I, honestly, I leave all these alone because I'm going to override them later anyway, and I'll show you that in a bit. So I just leave them alone. If even if it's a single item, I just leave it alone uh, because I'm going to change it anyway. So uh, and and we'll override that at the token level. So here in the container settings, this is where it gets really kind of neat because this is where I want to make this a container. I don't want it to be this item sitting on the ground with its name underneath it, and I, I you know I want it to be a box that they have to figure out how to open or maybe it's locked or you know maybe you know it, it they try and they try and they can't get it open. maybe it's got some sort of spell on it that makes it tough to open the, the lid I mean there's there's any number of things that you could do but first of all if you make it a container here now it assumes that all those items are inside the container uh, I'm gonna say yes it's closed okay I'm not gonna lock it because that's not important for me right now but you can you could lock it and then it interacts you interact with it as a GM just like you would any like locked door um, and uh, then you can set these these cool little paths for images now here's where this I had mentioned I think I mentioned to you earlier all these cool little uh, uh, token artwork pieces that are all over my my map uh, because the maps are not really that cool when you, when you uh, you know first bring them in uh, and we're going to talk about that in a future video as well as how to set up these grids correctly but um, this is where you can set a, a for example, an item, uh, it should be closed, I should say an image of it being closed. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna look at my token packs. And you can see I have these two little furniture token packs here. These are what I bought from this guy and you'll, I'm gonna put the link down in the, the description uh, there and, and you can go to, I mean, I, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. So you can, you can get whatever you want and I don't make any money on it. But they're super cheap too, which is cool. Uh, I'm going to just, I'm going to go with chest. <clears throat> I'm going to do a search for chest. Now you can see I have all these different collections of chests. Now there are hundreds of items this guy includes. And I'll turn the pictures on. You can see all, all this really cool artwork that, that he includes. And, and this is just one pack. And I think I paid maybe $10 or $15 for it tops. Um, and it's got hundreds of these in it. It's just the coolest thing ever. Um, I like this one. So I think we're going to we're going to use this one. So you'll notice obviously it's got open chest, closed chest, different angles, different, you know, pointing different directions. And this one is going to be up against the wall on the on the east wall. So it's going to be uh, vertical like this as opposed to horizontal like this. And the lock is on this side, so it's going to open for us left to right, right? So I'm going to use this as the closed. And then as the open, I'm going to pick and then, yeah, this is it. It opens up like this way. I'm going to pick that one as the open. And then I'm not going to pick an empty, but if you had token artwork that showed the opened image with a bunch of stuff in it, and then that same image without the stuff in it, you could use the empty one in there. Once they take everything out, that's when it will change to empty, right? That's, that's just so cool. I think it just adds a layer of coolness to how it works. Uh, here's another layer is the sounds. So you can put in a closing sound, an opening sound, and a lock sound. I'm not going to do a lock sound because it's not locked. But let's assume I wanted to, and I'm just going to use the standard sounds that come with Foundry here. And there, here's the, the four that, that come with it. So uh, this lock sound is the, the sound that typically players hear when they go to open a door and it's locked. It's that, you know, kind of sound on it. So I'm just going to pick that for the closing sound. And I'm also going to pick it for the opening sound. I'm not going to worry about the lock sound because it's not locked. So uh, there we go. So now we've we've updated how the container looks and how it sounds and how they can interact with it. So finally, I'm going to go to sharing settings. And this is, again, why I put this the 100 pieces of platinum in there. That would be a haul for somebody, huh? Uh, but this controls how your players can take items from the container. So first up are these two sharing items for, or sharing enabled uh, uh, settings for items and for currencies. So for example, let's say you have uh, the three items in the container and you've got uh, three players playing currently, not including the Game Master, of course, three players that are actively in the, in the game. Uh, the, if you click this, they can only take one each. It says they can only take their share. Well, if there's three of them and there's three items, they can only take one each, right? So they can't just grab all three and go, oh, those are mine. Which, of course, I as the GM wouldn't allow anyway, but, you know, bottom, I mean, unless they're the only player, but uh, that's not going to happen. Same thing with currencies. Uh, it, so if you hit the sharing enabled 
uh, for currencies and say you've got four players and there's a hundred pieces in there, they can each only take 25. It doesn't let them take more than that, which I think is cool. Now, if you turn off these sharing, you can enable this take all button, which means anybody could just go bump and hit it and take everything and put it in their inventory. And then if you gotta, you know, control it by saying, wait a minute, you shouldn't have taken that, then you gotta take it out and put it back in somebody else's inventory. So this, this take all to me is a little dangerous. So I, I'm not gonna do that, I don't do that. And I certainly want to have the sharing enabled for currencies. Now, this enable split with players button you're going to see in a second. And you'll see it says uh, enables the split, say five ways, four ways, three ways, whatever button uh, when you're looting the item pile. So what this means is, again, if you had, let's say, four players and there was 100 gold pieces in this container, you hit this split four ways and it will automatically go vroom, and it will disperse 25 gold pieces to each one of those players and it will put it in their inventory so it literally increases their inventory for you it doesn't just say it does it does it which i think is very very cool um now i told you it, i put 100 gold pieces in this item pile so this last one i'm not gonna by the way this very last button just resets all the the changes that you may have made uh to these settings but uh, this last one, it says split only with active players, right? Remember that. We're going to come back to it in just a second. So I'm going to update the pile. Close the lid. And now here we are with this hat of wizardry. Now, it's not a hat of wizardry. It's a chest. And we don't want it to say hat of wizardry. We don't want it to say anything, frankly. So I'm going to right click on it. And just like any other token, I'm going to configure the token, right? So now I can make it chest just because that way I know. And frankly, displaying uh, always for everyone is silly to me. I I typically say never displayed on these items so that they don't know what it is. They can just see that they can interact with it. So that's the way I'm gonna leave it. So it doesn't do that. Now you could always make this, you know, hovered by anybody or hovered by anyone, which means if anybody hovers over it, it's gonna say chest underneath it, right? Which I, I guess is okay, but frankly, I want my players to work a little bit harder than that so I don't I just leave it as never displayed uh, so this default item pile pile is the actor that this token represents remember we were talked about these actors over here and it created this default item pile actor that's what it's talking about here do not change this and do not delete this and do not delete this because that will be a problem for you it will break it so just don't touch it just leave it alone okay uh, no I want <clears throat> there we go and uh, of course, linking actor data doesn't really matter because the, this this is a dynamic actor. Uh, I'm sorry, this is a fixed actor that we don't want to be dynamic. So we don't want to be changing it in the game. We want to leave it alone. So uh, coordinates, that's where it is. It's going to change if you move it, so it doesn't matter. Elevation is kind of neat because what if you wanted to put this like way up like on a chandelier or I, I don't know, something where you know, a only somebody that can fly or, or somebody that is, is a wizard or a warlock or, or has some sort of magic abilities could actually get to it. Now, it, it's not going to change the look on your grid, but it will change the way that your players interact with that item. Uh, as far as rotation, I don't even bother with that because we, we'll, we'll do that uh, inside a foundry anyway if we want to. You could lock it if you want, I guess. And, of course, you can make the token disposition friendly neutral or hostile. What does that do? If you don't know, it changes the color of the frame that uh, appears around the item when somebody hovers over it. It's red if it's hostile, it's uh, yellow if it's neutral, and it's cyan if it's friendly. So that's the only thing that this does. I'm just going to leave it to neutral. Okay, it doesn't need to have vision. You could, you could add light to it if you wanted to. If you want it to be a glowing item, you can make it this glowing orb you know, green thing or whatever, whatever you want it to be. You could do that if you like. Uh, so now I'm going to update the token. And so there you go. Now it's just a chest and nothing happens when I hover over it. Uh, and so it, nobody's going to see the word chest or anything else when, when it happens. And I can confirm that because I'm going to go show us the player's view. And now he hovers over it and it's just yellow because it's neutral, which is perfectly fine. Uh, so remember, I, I told you about that interaction distance setting. Now, here's my player, and he's going to interact with it, and you see it says, you're too far away to interact with this pile because he's not one away. So if I move him up here, this is what happens. Now, I know you're not going to hear this right now because I've got this muted on, on his side, but 
When he double clicks, it opens and you'll hear it. And I'll, I'll play that for you in a second. But now you can see all of the items that are in here. Remember, I said you can either turn on or off this ability to, for them to inspect these items. Frankly, if, if they're, and you can't do it individually yet, which I think, if you're listening, author, please change that because I think that's very cool. Uh, it would be really neat to be able to, to literally not show. I mean, wouldn't, how, how interesting would that be to your players if they could inspect everything but one piece? <laughs> They'd be like, uh, I don't want to take that. <laughs> so, you know, just I, I just think it's a cool way of interacting. I think that, that's pretty neat. But anyway, so now you've got all these items and you can see that they can take one uh, themselves. And because right now uh, this is set to split three ways because there are three active play I sorry three players in this game and that uh, that legitimately there are three players but right now there's only one logged on so this says that uh, this says right here if I tried if I as this character tried to change uh, the amount here to anything above 34 which actually isn't a split of three but I guess you can't do 33 in the third. You'd leave one in there. So one person's going to get 34 and the rest are going to get 33 if they do it. Um, but I can only take up to 34 because I am currently the only player in here, but there are three players registered in this game, right? And it, that makes total sense. So I can't take all that. Now, you could see this button says split currency three ways, which means if I click this, it will then split out those 100 to myself, and the other two players, even though they're not online and they're not playing. Okay, so let me say that again. If I do this and these other two players are not online, this three ways here means I will be sending them platinum even though they're not in the game. So when they log back on next, they're gonna see, oh, I got platinum, where'd that come from? Right, if you even look at that. So I'm gonna close this lid now. Now I'm gonna go back to the setup and I'm gonna change that. So I'm going to change this to where under sharing only split only with active players, meaning they're logged on. Now you see two because I'm the game master I'm always in, but this is the only player that's logged on remotely to my server. So I'm going to update the file and you see it even says split, split currency one way. All right, so let's close the lid and we'll leave it. By the way, here's where here's what you would hear or they hear when they interact. So watch, I'm going to, when you right click now on this it, as a container, you can lock it, unlock it, you can open it, close it, or you can configure it. So I'm going to, I'm going to open it. Watch. Hear that sound? I'll do it again. Okay. So that's that little lock sound that I'm talking about. Okay. That's what the players will hear. I'm, and I've got them muted, like I said. So uh, let's go back over to the player's view. And uh, now he's going to open this up. And you'll notice it now says split currency one way because he's the only one logged on. So even though I've got Gendon in here, who's essentially an NPC, he's not logged on to the game. He's a token in the game, but he's not logged on to the game. So it doesn't see any other active players that way, that reason, uh, sorry, for that reason, he can then take all 100 pieces because he's the only one here. And he could take each one of these as well. Okay, so that's how that sharing all works. So I'm going to close the lid. And uh, that's that's it. Uh, I was trying to think if there was something else that I missed here. But I, I think I got everything for you. Um, the, I think the coolest part is, is that you can use these tokens uh, to create token artwork, to create basically anything that you want. And like I said uh, before... Uh, I'm going to go back to my view. Uh, like I said before, uh, uh, you know, basically all of this artwork, with very few exceptions, is his. Uh, even these gnomes, the, these shelves, the tables, the little lanterns. Um, you know, I think the only thing that comes in this map uh, that is built in, that's baked into this map, is these blades. This little crossbow doohickey. These barrels that are over here. These two little dudes. Uh, and I think that's it. I think that's all that's here. Everything else you see here. Oh, and this oven that's right here. Um, other than that, everything that you see here is created by, well, not created by, I didn't create the artwork, but all of this was added by me, which 
I, I just think it's so cool that that token artwork is out there and it's so darn cheap. So again, I'll leave that link in the description. So that's pretty much it guys. Um, and gals, uh, if you have any questions about this again, it's called item piles and I, I'll leave a link uh, down in the, the description as well. Uh, and I'll let you know for sure that you can go ahead and, and, uh, uh install it directly inside of foundry. Um, but if you have any questions or again, if I said something wrong, uh, and you're screaming at your, your screen, go, no, that's not right. It's not right. It's not right. Uh, first of all, you should have raised your hand and said something. I would have acknowledged you. But second of all, uh, I, I would really like to hear from you and tell me if I'm wrong. I want to know if I'm wrong. I know I hate disseminating bad information if I can avoid it. So again, thank you so much for joining me here in the city of Asmodea. And uh, again, this is Lord Gear. Please do me a favor, smash that subscribe button, hit that like button and share this video with uh, people it will really help us grow this channel and it'll mean a world to, to all of us. It'll keep us interested in doing this for you because there's a whole bunch of these to come. Trust me. Uh, and uh, really appreciate again you being here. Adventure well. Be safe. Be kind. Peace.